One of the advantages of green screen photography is that each element of your photo key project can be repositioned at any time so you can achieve the best framing possible. The position tool set gives you control over the two main elements of your composite, the foreground and the background. Just as in the filters tool set, these tabs at the top of the toolbox allow you to select which one you are adjusting. The controls are identical for both, but we'll start with the foreground. There are two basic ways to reposition our foreground. You can use the toolbox controls found in these panels or manipulate the layer directly on the canvas. Generally, the canvas method is more useful and intuitive, so we will examine it first. When you are in the position tool set, the control handles will display in the work area. The square handle controls the size of the foreground and the round handle controls its rotation. Adjusting the position of our foreground is as simple as clicking on it and dragging. By default, every image you import will display at 100% scale, which, depending on the canvas size you are using, will often be larger than the canvas area. Here, our 5 by 7 inch canvas uses a resolution of 1500 by 2100 pixels, but the source image that we're working with has a much larger resolution. So if we switch back to our position tool set, I'm going to reset that to the center using the reset button at the top right of our position panel that recenters our image. And then if we click in the square handle and drag upwards, we can reduce the size of the foreground until it fits our canvas better. Notice that there is a green bounding box around the outside of our foreground, indicating the edges of the original green screen image. When repositioning the layer, you need to click inside this box in order to drag it around. The round handle controls the rotation of the image. When you position your mouse on the round handle, a circle appears around the position controls. Drag the handle around this circle to change the rotation of the layer. In some cases, the controls in the toolbox can be more effective than the handles on the canvas. Rotating images is one instance where this is sometimes true. If you wish to rotate an image by 90 degree increments, if the original is oriented the wrong way, for example, then the rotation buttons allow you to do so with a single click. Or in this case, we want our foreground and background to be rotated the exact same amount. So if we adjust the rotation on our foreground again, then we can look at that number, switch to our background tab, and enter the exact same numbers there so that the angle on each of the two layers match perfectly. The flip horizontal and flip vertical buttons also provide functionality that isn't available from the canvas controls, enabling you to quickly mirror the original image. The scale control is fairly simple. You can drag the slider to change the scale of the selected layer, or enter a numeric value into the text field. Here we need to increase the scale of our foreground a bit so that this corner is filled in by our foreground. So we can just drag that up until the bounding box there is outside of the canvas, and we know that that corner is nicely filled in. Likewise, with the position controls, you can adjust the horizontal and vertical position of the foreground by using the sliders or by entering specific numbers if you find it necessary to do so. In this case, now that we've increased the size of our foreground again, we need to shift it down and to the left to give our subject a little bit more headroom in that corner. So let's slide that over to the left a bit and then bring it down a little further. There we go. And then it looks like we could actually stand to decrease the scale of our foreground again. So here in the text box, you'll notice these arrows, which bring it down 1% at a time. So we can reduce that a little bit. And then let's drag that foreground up just a little bit more. You can reset any tool to its default position by clicking the orange reset button, as we did earlier. If you wish to reset only a single control, for example, perhaps you just want to reset the vertical position to its default zero setting, you can right click on the slider for that control to reset it. 
You can also reset the entire current tab by clicking the larger reset button at the bottom of the tool set. Okay, to finish off this image, I'm going to switch back to the background tab and I'm just going to decrease the size of the background so we can see a little bit more of it there. I'll go ahead and do that using the canvas controls there, bring it in until it's almost to the corners, and there we go. You will find very similar positioning controls in a few other tool sets in PhotoKey 4. The Layers tool set has similar controls for positioning each of the layers that you import there. So if I activate this layer, you can see we have the same control handles on the canvas, and then the same sliders are present in the toolbox. If you import an overlay into your project, you'll find the position controls in this tool set also work the same way. And once you've imported an overlay, the canvas handles will appear also. And then finally in the text tool set, if we add a text item, we have the same positioning controls for that text item on the canvas, and then an angle adjustment in the toolbox as well. In our next video, we'll take a deeper look at the new tool set in PhotoKey 4, the Layers tool set.